time. Hello everyone, welcome to Average Joe Watch Reviews, where we do more than just reviews. Today we have a Seiko showcase showcasing two distinctly different looking Seikos, but they are actually a lot more alike than one would think. And we're going to dive into that in one second. But before we do so, if you're not here subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and also click a like, which is the most charitable way to help out Average Joe Watch Reviews. So, the Seiko 5 designation, that was actually a 1970s marketing campaign to designate five specific indications that uh, are, that go into a Seiko 5 Sports. Number one, it was the Dioshock, which is a fancy way of saying it had to be shock resistant. Number two, here comes another Dio term, it had to have the Dioflex, which is another fancy term meaning it had to have an unbreakable mainspring. Number three, it had to have the day date function. Number four, automatic winding. And then number five, water resistance. Um, and actually I think it's, I think they said impeccable water resistance. Whatever that means, I don't know. But I know that they upgraded that list in the modern watches. And I know one of those got replaced with the crown being recessed at the four o'clock position. And I know there was a couple more. So if you guys know, Comment down below the new Seiko 5 uh, regulations. Um, I would definitely love to hear them. So, with no further ado, let's dive into the comparison between the two Seiko 5s. All right, so we have two distinctly different looking Seiko 5 models here, but they are actually more alike than you would think. Let me first introduce you to the Seiko SNZ F as in Frank 15K1, also known as the Sea Urchin. Now, myth has it that it's nicknamed the Sea Urchin because of the hour markers at 6, 9, and 12 o'clock. I'm going to show you guys a screenshot of these actually being sold on Etsy. Believe it or not, that is pretty disturbing to say the least, guys. Um, I have to admit. So this watch obviously is modeled after the Rolex Submariner and it's got some really clean looks to it. Uh, this one is actually discontinued and but you can still buy this on Amazon. Um, so here is the second one I want to introduce you to. This one here is model SNZ H57J1. And this one is actually modeled after the 50 Fathoms by Blancpain. I'm going to flash a picture up of the Blancpain to show you the resemblance. Seiko definitely put its own flair into this watch. And they did a really, really nice job. So, if we get into the likenesses of the two watches, I would like to first introduce you to the movement. The movement on both of these watches, as you can see here on the rotor, and it's also written on the case back, is the Seiko Caliber 7536 Caliber. Um, and that is actually a 23 joule movement. And you're gonna get anywhere from 40 to 42 hour power reserve. Um, some people say 41, some say 40. So I'm gonna just say 40 to 42 hours, not too bad. Uh, these are actually slowed down to your typical movements of around 28,800. These, these particular movements are actually 21,600 beats per hour. So these are slowed down, but they don't get the additional power reserve that you would get out of like a Tissot, for instance. Um, this one is actually slowed down as well to the 21,000. You could see a very similar um, ticking of the hands as opposed to that really smooth sweep that we're used to. But these are automatic movements. The, but the Tissot Lilac Powermatic 80 has the 80 hour power reserve as opposed to the 40 hour power reserve, even though both of the movements have been slowed down to the same beat rate. So pretty interesting fact there, guys. So if we take a look at the Loom, um, the Seiko Sea Urchin, definitely has 
better loom, but I think that's because of the layout of the loom. Um, the, the, the loom is actually on all of the markers, whereas the Seiko 5, uh, the 50 Fathoms, um, you can see just at the tips. So it, it, it appears that it's not as good. Um, so I'll give you guys a side by side and you can judge for yourselves. So we're gonna take a, a, a listen to each bezel. Okay, and then we have the sea urchin here. So I would have to say that the sea urchin's definitely more smooth. It definitely has a different sound to it. Whereas the 50 fathoms definitely, you can feel each and every, um, you can you, you can feel each and every uh, click. Um, it's not as smooth, um, but I think you get probably a more tactile feel here as opposed to this one, which is smooth, a little hard to turn, but it is smooth. Um, probably not as practical of of a bezel as this one would be. So just putting that out there. Now they both actually share the same water resistance at 10 bar, which is 330 feet. So, you know, these are not considered your deep divers. Um, the other thing that you they, they both share is the fact that they both are non-hand winding, non-hacking movements. The only way that you can actually get these movements um, wound up is by shaking them and even starting them up and then keeping them on the wrist for the, you know, to keep the mainspring um, nice and tight and fully wound. So if I were to buy one today and I can only buy one, which one would I buy? Well, I'm gonna flash up the price for this one that I found on Amazon. As you can see, it's pretty hefty right now and I think people are taking advantage of the fact that it's discontinued but just because it's discontinued doesn't mean it is rare. Now granted, I did buy this watch for $100 about two and a half years ago on eBay. I mean, I got it for a steal. Now, the other thing guys is that they both actually come with the jingly jangly bracelet, which I take off m most of my sacreds, if not all of them, and I put them into a box and never see them again. I don't even know where the bracelets are, to be honest with you, that's how bad they are in my opinion. So I have these both on CL claw straps. This one's on an Iwantastrap.com and this one is actually on an Artem strap. So I just, that's just my preference. So getting back to price, this one here is on Amazon for 200 and right around 59 dollars so i would say look price and if i if i look at price and style i i go with this one all day long but i know a lot of you guys love that rolex submariner look and man this is this this would be hard 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 to toss or to, to, to pass up so um, I'd like to hear from you guys down below. Which one would you choose? Let me take some measurements before we actually head out. So I'm going to take out my trusty calipers and we're going to take a look at the sea urchin. So let's so let's measure the sea urchin first and foremost. And we're looking at a 41 millimeter case and our 50 fathoms here is actually the same size pretty cool case thickness we're looking at a 14 millimeter compared to I believe this one's a little thinner if I'm not mistaken yeah this one here is right at a 13 millimeter um, the strat the the lug width on both of these I believe it is same this one's a 22 and 
Yeah, we're looking at a 22 as well. And then lug to lug. Lug to lug is very important when looking at a watch. I have a seven inch wrist and we've got a 48 millimeter for the 50 fathoms. And on the sea urchin, we're looking at uh, 40, 48. So just one millimeter taller. Um, I'm gonna show you both watches on the wrist before I head you out. I'm actually wearing the Swiss watch company bunker today on that very comfortable Velcro strap. Loving it, very, very comfortable. Breathes very well and it's a great, great summer strap. And we're gonna put on the sea urchin and check that out on my seven inch wrist. That is looking perfect on the wrist. So that's that one. And then we're gonna put the 50 fathoms on as well and check that one out. Definitely another perfect fit. So look, you can't go wrong with either of these watches. I think you're going to be hard pressed to find the sea urchin here at a at a decent price without the price gouging going on right now. So you're probably going to have a better time finding a more fair price on this uh, 50 fathoms. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed and possibly even learned something. Also, if you could teach me something down below, I always love it when you guys teach me something. Um, it, it never ceases to amaze me how much I actually learn in the comments section. So keep those comments coming in. I really do appreciate it. So remember one thing though, that there's always time to be kind to one another, especially in that comment section. So if you disagree with someone, just be kind about it. You attract more bees with honey. So I just... I invite people to disagree, even if it's with me, I have no problem with that, but it's just the way that you come at people will be the result of how that person responds. So just putting that out there, um, and that's about it, guys. So thank you so much, and God bless, my friends. <laughs>